Hello and welcome to the video where I'm taking my yearly dive into costume making. Uh, one sec, get this off. Oh. God. Right, there we go. So, um, this is my, as I've said, my yearly um, dive into costume making and this is for the steampunk asylum uh, festival which i go to every year um, so this is a steampunk tech priest uh, which is a character from the warhammer 40,000 universe got a bit obsessed with warhammer recently as you may have noticed um, it's loosely based and very loosely based on this chap i don't know how easily you can see him there but as you can see it's quite a insane model and these guys are sort of look after all of the uh, the Imperium's uh, machinery and sort of pray to a, uh, a, a sort of a machine god so um, I quite like the look of them I mean obviously it's so elaborate that I couldn't really do anything like this full scale but I thought I could at least take elements of this and incorporate this into a character so that was a sort of basic idea of this the piece itself is actually made out of bits and pieces from lots of uh, previous costumes the good thing about having done the uh, asylum for 10 years or more now is that I've got lots and lots of bits that I've made for um, previous um, years and so I've been able to combine a lot of those together into this costume so I'll go through those various bits as we go but uh, let's get started so the first element that I want to tackle is the helmet and for this I'm using the mould that I made several projects ago I think this is from about four or five years ago and it's a steampunk helmet that I made which is sort of loosely based on the character of Cronin from the Hellboy movies I deliberately made this one as a bit of a blank sort of mask you know there's not a lot of detail on it um, and that was sort of deliberate I wanted to have space to add detail to it and I found over the years that this thing's been really really useful I've used it on several occasions for the original mask but also I've made a robot with it uh, which I featured on the channel various other bits as well so it's kind of versatile simply because it is blank in the way that I've sort of made it so this is going to be a good basis for a mask for this character. So what I'm doing is just pouring in some polyurethane resin that I have tinted. And this is rotocasting resin, so I can just rotate the mould and the uh, resin will stick to the inside of the mould as it flows through it. Right, so I've built up several layers of this uh, and I think it's now thick enough for me to take it out of the mould. I must admit one of the batches that I mixed up I think I got the mixture slightly wrong so this seems slightly not entirely cured but I think it's going to be fine it's amongst other layers which are so it should be okay. Right there we go so that's not too bad. So the next element I want to get is this and as you can see it's been sitting on the floor of the workshop discarded for about a year. This is the piece I started making last year for the asylum which I abandoned halfway through the project. I just felt that I hadn't really realised the idea um, correctly and it was looking a little bit naff. And I think the main issue with it is really I just, I'm not that great with foam. Um, a lot of cosplayers get really really nice effects with it but, um, but I've always struggled a little bit to get a nice finish on it. Nevertheless, I do like the basic shape of this, so I think there's a good basis here for a costume. So, and I don't want to let all that work go to waste, so I want to use this. So what I'm going to do is what I've done for previous um, occasions when I've used foam, and I'm going to cover the entire thing in a layer of fiberglass. That way I can just use spray paints and all the regular painting techniques um, I would normally use. And I won't have to worry about the foam sort of um, interacting with the paint and um, ruining my finish effectively. Um, so what I'm going to do is attach a layer of fiberglass to this and a problem that I've found when I've previously done this is uh, once you get the resin on the fiberglass it will start sliding off the shape that you're attaching it to. So what I'm doing here is I've used some spray glue and what I'm going to do is glue a layer of uh, chopped strand mat um, onto the piece then I'll add the resin on top of it so that should hold the whole thing together as the resin's curing and stop it sort of sliding about. So I'm just adding a layer of polyester resin to this um, and now I could use a layer of polyurethane roto casting resin on this instead. Um, that would have worked perfectly well as well and um, the, the advantage really is that the polyester resin is much much cheaper and I've got a ton of it so um, I'm just going to stick with the sort of process that I usually use because I, I know I can rely on what I'm going to get with this. 
So I sort of jumped ahead a little bit here and the layer of fiberglass has dried and I've also filled in some gaps with some Bondo, some car body filler. That's the thing with fiberglass, once it's dry it does tend to come out quite bumpy so there's a, a lot of sanding required to get a nice smooth finish. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, the process is much as you've seen me do before, you know, give it a sand, give it a layer of undercoat so you can see where all the uh, imperfections are, fill those in with Bondo. Uh, rinse and repeat so there's quite a lot of sanding to get to a uh, position where this looked decent but jumping ahead here you go you can see I've got a nice smooth finish here and I'm starting to add on some additional pieces so I've got this large capacitor um, in Lincoln where the uh, Asylum Festival is held there's a shop that sells sort of second-hand electronics like lots of like interesting mechanical bits so every time I'm there I pop down and buy some stuff that I can use on the next project so I think that's going to look quite nice as a, as a mechanical detail there. So what I also made in the previous year for the project that I abandoned was this mould of acorn nuts. Uh, typically with sort of steampunk sort of retro sci-fi stuff you want quite a lot of sort of industrial mechanical looking stuff on it and having like large bolts is a, quite a good visual indication of that idea so I've got this mold of acorn nuts in various sizes I'm just going to cast up a bunch of these and I can glue them on and use them for mechanical detailing So I need to differentiate the mask from previous versions of this that I've made. So what I'm doing here is just using some pieces of cardboard to figure out the shapes that I need to build a extension on the side. So once I'm sort of happy with the uh, contours of the mask, I've cut these out in thin plywood and I'm just going to hot glue these to the front of the mask. What I'm trying to do is build up a sort of a unit on the side uh, which I'm going to add a bunch of lenses and other mechanical detail parts to. I'm also going to cut this down to size a little bit. This whole thing is going to be covered by a hood, so only certain parts of it are going to be visible. Um, and I don't need this to go back quite as far as it usually would, so I'm just going to cut the back off it here. So what I've done here is to use a trick I've used uh, plenty of times in the past, that's just to build up a basic shape in wood, and then to cover that in styrene plastic to hide the, uh, the wood grain. So I've got a sort of a basic shape on the side here, so what I'm going to do is glue on this uh, remote control car piece onto the side. I think that'll add a nice piece of mechanical detailing. I've also got these uh, brass bushings um, which I usually use for lens holders. So I'm just going to glue these on the front there with a piece of pipe uh, to hold them in place. Right, so not looking too bad there. I think I've also added a few additional resin shapes on the front just to add a, a bit of additional mechanical detailing. So I wanted to get a basic idea of how this might look. So I've just done a bit of video here with some of the pieces in place to get a basic idea of how this is going to look. Now I want to add some more to the front over the mouth section. And the thing about this though is it's relatively weak uh, resin. So what I've done is to add a strip of aluminium bar through the center that I can screw things to. And that's just going to add a degree of strength to it. So there's going to be a little bit of weight hanging off the front um, with these hoses. So I just figured it could all fall apart if it was literally just attached to the resin. So I've attached these shapes together with a piece of wood holding it all in place. So what I need to do now is start hiding all of these details. So what I'm now going to do is start um, building up this shape. I'm just going to fill in these gaps with some foam. I can then come in with some Bondo over the top and start building out the shape. Now this being a Warhammer 40,000 inspired piece, it's going to have lots of skulls on it. So what I'm doing is um, cold casting a skull using this mould that I made again in the previous year. I use these skulls for my leg armour, but I really like the mould, I like the, uh, the design of the piece. So I'm going to use that on this uh, piece as well. So I'm just using some brass powder and resin uh, to cold cast the piece and that should give it a nice brass finish. I 
Right, so it's not looking too bad and giving it a polish on the polishing wheel can bring out quite a nice finish to it as well. So I'm just trying to build up some mechanical detailing on the back of this. As you can see I've attached these hoses um, to the sides, I think they look pretty good. Uh, they're from Gas Masks, I got a bunch of them off eBay uh, relatively cheaply. Um, so they're really really useful. I just want to build up um, some additional detail on the back of this to sort of break up these flat planes. So I've got a variety of resin pieces that I've cast uh, from previous projects. And like I said I've got these large capacitors which I think look pretty good. And on the front, as you can see, I've attached my cold cast skull. Skulls are everywhere in 40k, so if you don't know how to terminate some cables or you need to hide some, uh, some gaps in your costume, stick a skull over them. It's usually a good bet. So a key piece of this costume, which is kind of the main idea I had for it really, is to have a third arm. And the obvious question if you're going to do that in a costume is, well, how do you control it? So I had an idea a while back, well, what if the arm was holding a staff? Uh, then I can move the staff myself with my hand, uh, and the third arm, if it's attached to the staff, would mimic those movements. So what I want to do is make a robotic arm that I can attach to the costume. Now obviously with all of this stuff on me, weight's going to start being an issue. So what I'm going to do here is make this thing as hollow as I can. And I'm going to make it out of this thin plywood that I've been using for a lot of the other pieces in the costume. We redid the bathroom recently and I ended up with tons of this left over so it's really useful stuff because it's pretty lightweight but it's also pretty strong. So I'm just going to hot glue a shape together. As you can see I've cut out some shapes uh, to use. I'm going to slowly build this up with uh, plywood and then I'm going to cover it in styrene plastic to give it a nice smooth finish. Right, so jumping ahead, you can see I've made a forearm as well, and this is modelled on the uh, miniature that I, I showed earlier in the video. Now what I've done is to put a bearing on the inside there, so I've got quite a nice uh, smooth range of motion uh, for that, so I think that's looking pretty good. So I want to glue some additional acorn nuts on this, just to give a bit more mechanical detailing. Now for the hand, um, I did think for a while about how I was going to do this, but I remember seeing these finger extenders um, online, and you can buy them relatively cheaply, and the idea is you put them on your fingers and you can have kind of creepy sort of mechanical hands. So I got some of these off eBay, and I thought these would be great as a basis for the hand that I want to use. Now they're a little bit weak, so what I actually ended up doing was um, strengthening them effectively by putting some aluminium on the inside. But I think these are going to be a really, really cool basis for a hand. So I've got the fingers but now I need a palm. So what I'm going to do is bend some acrylic sheet uh, to shape. So I've made the shape I need out of paper just to check the size and I'm now going to cut this out of some acrylic sheet. So I'm now going to heat this up with a heat gun and then bend it to shape. So there we go, so I've got the fingers attached to it and um, I think that's looking pretty good as there's a robotic arm. Now I couldn't resist having a bit of a test and I was actually really pleasantly surprised with this in that the arm can actually hold the staff more or less on its own. There's a sort of a degree of balance with it and if you get it in the right position it will just literally sit there and if you move it will sort of compensate for itself and there's a certain point where it will start falling over but actually this was really really cool and as you can see I've sort of built up a bit of a staff here and I've added some additional bits to it these are all made out of drain pipe um, and I've also made a unit on the side there using the same plywood and styrene plastic method that I've used for a few other pieces in this so this was a really promising start to the to the arm section So there's a bit of a close-up of the hand and as you can see I've actually reinforced the inside with some aluminium bar to hold the fingers together. And I've used some connectors from uh, electrical junction boxes to hold those in place so that's pretty strong I think. And there's some of the mechanical detailing on the staff. As I mentioned there's just plywood and um, styrene plastic and some drain pipe and a few other bits. But uh, I think that's looking pretty cool. Now, a key aspect of the Tech Priest characters is that they have large sort of mechanical axes. So I need to make an axe head uh, for this. Um, it's going to be fairly large, so what I've done is to cut up a basic shape in um, lining paper. And I'm going to cut this out of plywood as well. I'm just going to hold this up here and make sure it's the right size. Uh, but I think that's looking, that's looking about right, I think. 
So here's the plywood shape attached to the staff, and um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's looking pretty good. You'll be a little bit careful with this. I do want to fit into a pub uh, when I'm up in Lincoln, so I'm probably going to make the top of this detachable just so I can take it off. Because um, obviously this will be fine outside, but inside a building it's going to get a bit crazy. So it's only so large you can go with this, but I think that's looking pretty cool. So I've covered that plywood shape in plastic, and now I'm sort of going ahead and building up the shape further. So as you can see, I'm slowly adding some mechanical detailing to this. And it's the same process as with everything else. Build it up in wood, cover it in styrene, and then give it a layer of mechanical detailing. So for the staff I'm going to add some additional skull uh, motifs on the side here and this is just another cast from the same mould I used earlier, just cut it down slightly because I didn't want it to protrude too far. So I'm getting to the point now where I can start painting this, so I'm giving this a layer of undercoat just to sort of tie everything together. So I've always liked sort of dark red as a sort of um, industrial sort of colour. Uh, so I'm going to use this for um, several key parts of this costume. I'm using a type of spray paint which is described as double acrylic. And I use this quite a lot for this sort of thing so I know it won't react to white spirit. So that means that I can do a bunch of oil washes over this to weather it and give it some additional definition. So this paint's really, really useful for that purpose. So I'm just going to use this on pretty much everything and then weather it down with oils. For the metallic parts, I'm going to give them a gloss black uh, initially and then come in with some metallics over that. So that should hopefully help with the me metallic finish uh, of these sections. I also got some light gold car spray paint as well. Um, so I'm going to use this as a base and then come in with some additional paints on top to sort of give it a bit more of a weathered metallic look. And for the helmet, um, I tried to do some shading with the airbrush, but then um, kind of screwed it up a little bit. So then I tried to wipe it off, and that kind of made it even worse. Um, so this is a bit of a kind of a can I rescue it uh, situation. I think it'll be fine. I mean, I want this to be all sort of messed up and oily and, and you know dirty. So um, what I'm doing is giving it a layer of uh, burnt umber oils here. And I'm going to take that back off again, and that should hopefully give it a nice weathered appearance. So hopefully I can hide some of the shading. I sort of uh, didn't quite get right with the weathering. Okay, I don't mind how that's looking. Um, I want to try and add a bit more variety to it though, so what I'm going to do is come in with some white oils. And I find these are really useful as a type of weathering, because once you've added this on, it can look like the paint has sort of been bleached out, maybe by sunlight or by you know rainwater or something like that. So what I do is give it a blob of white oil paint and then just feather that out with a brush. And it can have the effect of sort of just breaking up the colour and giving it a bit of variety. Alright, now after all that I decided that the colour scheme was still a little bit too samey, so I want to add a bit of variety. So I'm going to spray these two centre pieces white just to break up the colour scheme a little bit. Okay, so not looking too bad. Now obviously adding weathering to white and that's really going to show up. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with the weathering here and clean it off more than I would on the sort of darker colours just because it's going to be that much more prominent. Okay, so not looking too bad I think. So I'm just giving the axe head a layer of gunmetal initially. Now I also want to paint out these uh, skull pieces on the axe as well. So I'm coming in with some gold here and I'm going to give that a base of gold acrylic then I can come in with oils again on top of that. And first off I'm going to weather it with some more burnt umber. I can then come back in with some sort of greens and mauves and give it that lovely um, corroded brass finish as well. Right, so that's where we are so far. Now there will be another part to this, as there's still a few elements I need to add to this. One thing that a lot of the tech priests have are these things, which are called servo skulls. 
And what that is, is a skull that sort of had cybernetic enhancements added to it. And they like float about the battlefield and sort of spy on things. Um, so what I want to do is have one of these um, sort of floating above my shoulder. And I'll probably sort of suspend that on a piece of wire. Now I have started making one of these. But obviously I need a skull and as you may know I've got tons of these. Because I made them for an Etsy store which um, I've sort of since shut down. Um, sold a few of them but not many. So I've got quite a few of these in a box. So, But that's handy. I can use one of those for my servo skull. So I've um, got this piece here. And what I want to do is start adding uh, bits to it. So I'm going to drill out the eye socket so I can fit this lens piece in there. Right, so that fits quite nicely, I think. I've also got this piece from a light fitting. I think that's going to look quite nice on the side as well. So I'm going to cut a hole in the side of the skull and try and fit this um, into the side. So as you can see, I've sort of made a start on this, but it's not quite finished yet. So I need to add some additional bits to it and also get it mounted on my shoulder. I also want to add a few accessories to this. Um, the joke with Warhammer is you can never have too many skulls. So I, might, I think I might actually add a skull hanging down on a chain. Uh, from my belt or maybe something like medallions or something I'm, I'm not quite sure yet but it needs a few more accessories i think so there'll be a second part but for the time being that's it so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time thanks very much for watching i'll be posting more videos on this project and others so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on please do subscribe alternatively you can visit my website which is www.thedarkpower.com or you can find me on facebook just search for the dark power